Hi, I'm Ryan Dennis, Curator and Programs Director at Project Row Houses. And I'm Jeanette Degollado, Public Art Coordinator at Project Row Houses. We're so excited to have the opportunity to organize the Project Row Houses Founders Bus Tours with you all in conjunction with our 25th anniversary celebrations. Um, Project Row Houses' mission is to empower people and enrich communities through engagement, art, and direct action. For our 25th anniversary celebrations, we are lifting up the work that we have done over the last 25 years and honoring all of the kind of participants that have helped us grow um, in the years. We'll be visiting public sculptures and paintings by four of our seven founding artists, Bert Samples, George Smith, Jesse Law, and Boyd Newsom. We'll begin our journey in Third Ward, travel to Fifth Ward, to the Houston Zoo, through Midtown, and then back at Third Ward. We'll end our journey right where we started at Project Row Houses. So thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy. The concept for Project Row House was uh, developed with in seven artists. We identify and call ourselves the Magnificent Seven. The late James Bettison, the late Burt Long, Jesse Lott, Rick Lowe, Burt Samples, George Smith, and myself. So we knew those two community organizations besides universities operating here. But there are community, nothing was going on. And we just bonded. We bonded because it was the mid-70s. A lot of things were going on. Houston was starting to evolve. There were groups, but we didn't have a group. And so I thought, I, we thought probably it would be important that we put together uh, something that would help our own community, our own people. You couldn't just walk into a gallery and say, hey, look at my work. You got to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. You see what I'm saying? The opportunities just were not there. We had been meeting for, for several months. We would travel from one home to another and have lunch and talk about ideas, concepts. A lot of arguing because there were seven egos. There was this road trip to go to visit Bert and he had a studio up just north of Splendor. That's when we went up there one, one day, uh, one weekend to talk about, you know, United type of action. We stopped at a liquor store just before his house and everybody bought what they wanted to drink. <laughs> and then we proceeded and ate food and got drunk talk about art and then on the way back start talking about what to do as a unified force. Ricky was still going to Texas Southern and we were walking through there one day and saw them houses and that night we had a meeting and he talked about the houses. He said the rural houses look just like a John Biggers drawing. Rick discovered these houses on uh, Live Oak and Holman and thought that they would be a good point for departure for us to begin this journey. And then once we started developing activity there, the city started becoming more interested, you know, because it was full of a lot of back taxes and stuff like that. Because the lady there, her name was Miss Courtney. Miss Courtney said, look, if you ain't trying to clean this place up, put some lights on it, and get rid of some of these junkies out the houses and stuff, 
There's crime and stuff going on in there. You're just kidding yourself. <laughs> you can't fool me. It's just another one of them con games. Unless you're going to do something. Provide some kind of action that's going to make some kind of change. It was really a uh, <laughs> kind of scary in a sense because I remember going under one of the houses and coming out. And for some reason, I had all white on. And I came out of that house with specks of black things on me and they were fleas. And then I thought about, well, probably needles under there because this was a drug infested area. So we began with trying to uh, renovate those homes and we were successful. And all that was done in sweat economics. All that happened because you had, you had energized and excited the overall artist community. That was the instant in which the row house concept was born. You know, the whole thing about creativity is not only that you create something of beauty, but how can you transform a community through the arts? And so Third Ward was our target, coming into a neighborhood where we could change the course of lives of people through the arts. And that's the whole premise, that's the whole idea, that's the whole concept for Project Row House. And that's why Rick got that MacArthur. <laughs> My name is, and I'm from somewhere, <laughs> from nowhere, from nowhere through a caravan, to a caravan, around, around a campfire camp light, a lovely woman in motion, a lovely from nowhere woman is where it came from, with hair that's my hometown. Her eyes were like that of a the title of the work at Kreenberger is The Work at Kreenberger. <laughs> Better known as <laughs> The Goddess of Transportation. It's the image on the old silver dollar. The walking liberty. Only this one is a standing liberty. <laughs> Spirit of liberty. Free. Victory. Dominance over all of the things that are out there to oppress you. That's what it means. If you don't believe me, watch the next boxing match. When somebody knocks somebody out, what's the first thing they're going to do? Hey. You see what I'm saying? It's a gesture that indicates triumph. It was commissioned by Metro. It took about five years from the inception to the completion. About four of those years of thumb twiddling. If it's public art, it's paid for by public funds, then you gotta wrap it up in red tape before it can get done. I have never felt any constraints on the way that I was allowed to produce and display my work. Even when people were saying, oh, I can't get my work shown, I had opportunities to show my work whenever I got ready. You see, in the days when people didn't have a, a chance to bid on a piece of public sculpture, I had this big life-size horse out there in the park by the fountain over on Montrose. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? When people were trying to beat the doors down and get an exhibition space, people came to me and said, hey man, you want to do something? <laughs> Whatever you want to do, let's do it. <laughs> so I didn't go out and say, hey, this is what I have. Do you want it? Somebody came and knocked on the door and said, I saw it somewhere. Please, may I have it? <laughs> I'll pay you for it. <laughs> so, in my opinion, great talent will always find a way to present itself, even if it's just under a rock somewhere. Public art is important, but it is not 
the importance that public art gives. It is the importance that the city places on public art. The public art is not there to uh, exert some kind of influence over the opinion of people. It's just there. And then if the city emphasizes it, that's where the opinions are developed. I'm Bert Samples. I'm one of the original members of Project Royal Houses. I wanted to portray something like a, a atlas in glass. I was making references to different cultures, but I mainly thought of, of oceanic cultures. I took elements out of calligraphy gestures that make reference to the Middle East, uh, the Far East, a certain type of subconscious language. One story I told them to focus on to keep the lines fluid and moving was the Walt Disney animation Dumbo. And it's this scene where Dumbo gets drunk and he has this nightmare of all these elephants coming at him. You know, they're speed racing and they're they had a, a Cuban club dancing. It's just going crazy all over. But it's done in the same kind of outlines of these burgundies, yellows, greens. So I told them, you know, take a look at that. Because I, I want those lines to really flow. When you do public art, you're putting yourself out there and you're asking for some response from the community. It's like jazz, it's like African music. You call out, you get a response. It's this thing that's constantly coming and flowing. I felt extremely proud and honored for me to have a piece in the same collection and, and building that my uh, mentor had created, created there. You know, when I, was in, when I was in school, I was always interested in geometry. For some reason, I was able to grasp well, that better than even <laughs> than regular arithmetic. You know, I was, like, I was better at it. And somebody told me I was more visual than I was. And that's why, you know, I, I mean, somebody would show me something like, well, how many sides are there, how many this, whatever. I was able to pick up on it quickly. There's a society called Dogon. They called them the Cliff Dwellers. I became interested in that region, that bounding era, that area. What excited me about that is that um, what I was told was that when they came to get slaves, to get black people from, they couldn't get the cliff, they could fight back because they were in the cliffs because the whites couldn't get the cliff, they couldn't climb. You know? My work doesn't have a lot of colors. It's more about shape and form and that kind of thing, but uh, I want people to experience something that they haven't experienced before, something kind of, you know, nuanced. I've been that fortunate. So I work as, as large as I can with little money, with very little resources, whatever. We don't have enough public art anymore. <laughs> My name is Floyd Newsom Jr. I'm an artist and a professor of art at University of Houston downtown. This particular piece, uh, Planters and Stem, is on Main Street. At Main Street Square, that's between Walker and McKinney. Planter represents the Gang of Eight. That was these eight very rich 
people of Houston, the Cullens, the Browns, the Abercon region that uh, set the course and the direction of the development of Houston. So the planter on it has like little silhouettes of the Astrodome, Pennzoil building, uh, representations of water like Buffalo Bayou, White Oak Bayou. And then the stems represent the smaller entrepreneurs that also contributed the growth and vibrancy of, of Houston. Uh, it propelled my career in, in public art. I think that art, public art, gives the community an opportunity to, to have light moments of refreshment around those steel, glass, brick buildings. Something that's colorful, something that, that, that stands out and allows them to, to see and then contemplate about. It engages them.